The closest most of us have ever come to a surfer gang is in front of a TV screen watching the 1991 movie Point Break, featuring guys riding waves and robbing banks. Obviously, that's just more Hollywood over-the-top fiction. But fast forward to 2007, and you might have caught the documentary film Bra Boys Blood is Thicker Than Water, a movie about real-life surfers in Australia that surfed waves but also got into hot water for their gang activities. They weren't the first surfer gang, of course. You might have heard of California's Cedar Rats or Hawaii's Wolfpack, whose motto is, you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. Surfer gangs are tightly knit, and none more so than the topic of today's episode of the infographic show, who are the Bra Boys? So, who are the Bra Boys? Well, if you read the news a lot, you might have seen some recent stories about prominent members of the gang, brothers Sonny, Kobe, and Jay Aberton, all of whom at some point have been accused of committing crimes. You might have seen Sonny and Kobe looking more like Hollywood actors than criminals, hanging out in front of paparazzi with actor Russell Crowe, who produced and narrated the documentary about them. But how did it get to this? What did these surfers do to achieve this kind of fame or notoriety? Are they gangsters or merely a group of men protecting their surf culture and embracing an unfettered life of freedom and an escape from the rat race? Or are they just thugs with surfboards that clutter the beach like sharp shards of plastic when the tide goes out? Let's find out. The Bra Boys gang started in the 1990s in Maroubra, an area not too far from downtown Sydney, Australia. The name Bra has nothing to do with the item of clothing that cups a woman's breasts, but is related to the Australian slang word for bro, and it's also the last part of the word Maroubra. The name actually means place of thunder, and it has lived up to that name in the past. For a long time, this was a rundown area where the poor white folks lived with the local aborigines. In those days, the poor were not allowed in the water during certain hours as authorities said they should have been working. Aboriginal people weren't even allowed in the water at all. This kind of oppression and disenfranchisement years later gave rise to some angry men, the consumption of drugs, and often violence. This gave birth to gangs in the area, of which there have been many by name, but none as notorious as the Bra Boys. At the center of the Bra Boys were the brothers Sonny, Kobe, and Jay. But we will mostly focus on the first two. While we might call them gang members, we must also remember that they were excellent surfers. Kobe, in fact, has been regarded at times as one of the greatest big wave surfers on the planet. While it's said they declared war on society, if you ask some locals, these guys were just boys having fun, with perhaps a few antics going too far in the vein of risky jackass type stunts and obviously the occasionally bare knuckle beach fight. But does that make them criminals? Well, when people get knifed and shot, we guess it does. The Aberton boys didn't get the best of starts in life, growing up with a heroin-addicted mother and a violent stepfather whose vocation was robbing banks. They didn't get much of what one might call parental guidance, so what they did do, instead of reading history and toiling with math, was go to the beach and surf. As Sonny said in an interview, we pretty much had to fend for ourselves. Only their grandmother seemed like the stable person in their lives, and with a house down at the beach, the brothers and lots of other young kids would hang out there. Many of these kids would later become part of the gang. In fact, Kobe said in an interview that if anyone started Bra Boys, it was her, meaning his grandmother. Her home was a home for boys from a lot of broken homes. They backed each other up and were emotional support for each other. In Kobe's own words, the boys will always be there for you. Around his upper chest, he has a tattoo saying, my brother's keeper. That was the gang's credo. Also behind the kids, though, were some pretty sketchy older guys, one of whom was called Martin Hines, but we'll get to him later. In the 1990s, when these kids were older and bigger, their patch would often be invaded by other gangs. These territorial disputes led to numerous fights, some of which ended up with guns and knives being involved, the occasional drive-bys, members being shot and stabbed, and bones getting broken by baseball bats. This was regular life at the beach when the guys were not surfing. Later, the gang all got tattoos, developed a special handshake, and the Bra Boys was properly formed. From a small group, they soon went to 50 members and then 100, but to get in the gang, you had to prove your worth, of course. At the same time, one of their things was to surf waves that just couldn't or shouldn't be surfed. The risk factor was part of the gang's thing. For some, this tribe was a menace to society. For them, they were a bunch of close-knit friends who had each other's backs. They often said they were never the guys that started the trouble, but just protecting their turf, or should we say sand. But they soon got on the wrong side of the law when around 160 members attended a party at a club. Guess who else was at that same club that night? A large group of off-duty police officers celebrating Christmas. It seems it was the police that night that were the pigeons among the cats, with Australian news reports saying at least 44 officers were left wounded after a massive brawl. Only eight gang members were arrested, but none were charged. In their defense, one gang member said not one knife or gun was pulled that night. 
He called it just a good old-fashioned brawl, something the bra boys had more experience with than the cops, it seems. Suffice it to say, the cops were not keen on the bra boys after this. The media also portrayed them as ruthless animals. The gang didn't see themselves this way, but over time, some members did get arrested and spend time in jail for crimes, including drug dealing, armed robbery, assault, and rape. Now back to the name we have mentioned already, Tony Hines, a feared violent psychopath and extortionist who had killed and beaten people almost to death. He had his differences with the brothers. This culminated with Hines getting in a car with a girl and Jay, the younger brother. He apparently put a gun to Jay's head and said, we're gonna do this. He meant rape the girl. Jay wrestled the gun from Hines and killed him. Hines' body was later found after four days. He'd been dumped over a cliff, Jay was arrested. Kobe was then arrested for attempting to pervert the cause of justice for not helping police with the investigation. He was released on bail, and a week later, he beat the world champion in a surfing competition in the first heat. He said in interviews he wasn't just surfing to be the best, but he had to win to raise money and look after his family. It was make or break, excuse the pun, to keep on surfing. He faced 15 years imprisonment, but was only given a suspended 9-month jail sentence. Jay got out of jail and was later acquitted for the murder. It was ruled he had acted in self-defense. The lawyers defending Jay later said they were given the best party they'd ever had by the Bra Brothers. Nonetheless, Jay has been in trouble with the cops many times since, doing more jail time. In 2018, he was charged for a home invasion and grievous bodily harm with a meat cleaver. Many of the Bra Boys were no angels, and later, gang members were arrested for cocaine smuggling not the brothers. Then came the riots of 2005, mostly related to warring gangs and racial tensions. Biker gangs, including Lebanese gangs, were causing trouble at various beaches and other places. But not Marubra, apparently, with Kobe once saying, if these fellas come to Marubra and start something, they know it's going to be on, so they stay away. But later the Bra Boys were involved in brokering peace deals between these warring factions, and things got better. In fact, we should say that the Bra Boys, despite their violent and criminal tendencies, were sometimes involved in social activism. In 2016, the Australian media said Kobe had converted to Islam and had dedicated his life to peace. He'd also made a good bit of money from surfing. Kobe said in an interview about his new outlook, Now everything is great, and I have never been so happy. I just want to help young people combat all the negativity and depression and the hate. The brothers created a clothing line called My Brother's Keeper and became celebrities in a way. Kobe even taught Paris Hilton how to surf at one point, albeit on a red carpet. In one story, he says he no longer associates with the Bra Boys gang, then in 2016, 300 strong. Some of these new members, Kobe said, don't deserve to bear the My Brother's Keeper slogan tattooed on them as they don't have the same values. Some of those new members were recently convicted of murder. Kobe once said, that tattoo stands for unconditional love, respect, and support of those close to you, regardless of race, gender, and age. So, what do you think about the Bra Boys? Criminal hoodlums, or just guys trying to watch each other's backs? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called America's Worst Serial Killer. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.